This episode of The General's Gentleman is sponsored by Sorcerer King Rivals, a new 4x grand strategy game where heroes of might and magic and Age of Wonders meet civilizations. Build your cities, gather your armies, and grow your magic to stop the evil Sorcerer King. Welcome to The General's Gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Company of Heroes 2. Relic, Winter, Balance, Preview. You remembered. Thing. <laughs> I did. I'm a real champion machine. I know what I'm talking about. Our players for today will be uh, Andres TC as our Soviets. And Jezlin as the OKW. We are excited to be bringing you a, a cast of this mod. We did one last night, but it wasn't a very good game. So I haven't decided yet if I'll post that. Depends how desperate I am for videos. Like, if I run out of videos, I'll post it, maybe. But yeah, I'm glad to be here. Uh, of course, I've been working on the mod for about a month now with Mirage Flower and Mr. Smith. So, I'm very important. I'm very interested, rather. <laughs> are, you, are you invested in it, or...? Um, <laughs> I'm very interested to see... Right. Um, how these changes come to fruition, and... and see if things need to be adjusted. There's a few things that we already have identified, such as penals being like a little bit over nerfed, Panzer II being a little bit over nerfed. A lot of people are saying the T70 is over nerfed, but I don't know about that. And a lot of people are saying the guards are over nerfed, but I also don't know about that. So there's some things that uh, we certainly need to see more of, uh, especially when we have players like Jeslin and Andre, who are pretty top players and should be able to give us a nice showcase here. Jeslin. Or rather, Andre can't quite get his conscripts in position against these Jumpinees behind heavy cover. Trying to decide on the best route, and behind heavy cover certainly is the best route after playing the uh, the uh, the dirty Garrison Gu Garrison Duking game and uh, successfully maintaining control over that munitions house. Yeah, he can actually go with the Kubel and just drive in and push around the cons. Yeah, the Jumpinees are maybe too large, too low to charge in, but. Uh, certainly buying a lot of time here. And look at the map control here. Andre has bugger all. He has three strat points because uh, he's been trying to fight over this territory for so long. Whereas Jezlin has had this munitions point for a while. He just got his fuel point now as well. So definitely better territory. And these cons uh, going to be running through negative cover. Andre tries to Uri out of this. But too late. Definitely too late, Machine. Uh, yeah, still losing engagement here. And Andre is not having a good time. Can't find a good engagement here. Has finally found a nice angle onto these Strim Pioneers. Should be able to win the engagement even at close range. We'll force them off. Oh. Doesn't, doesn't want to bleed. I mean, what? Well, I mean, the, How did they win that? The, the cons are better at close. Yeah, they are. I, I just thought it wasn't going to be enough. You know, I thought that they lost too much damage. Yeah, that was... I agree. Actually, Jezlon's squad had more health, but he had less models. But Yeah. I mean, he's still oh, might wow. have been able to take that one. Quick AT grenade tech for Andre. There goes the Kubel. Nice work with those AT grenades. It is a big investment early on, especially in terms of fuel, but it's one of those things that, whilst you're pretty much paying more than the Kubel to kill the Kubel, uh, it actually then can really pay off as yeah. the game progresses, because then you already have the AT grenades. It's going to be hard for your opponent to use the flak half track if they want to use that. It's going to make it easier for you to just generally scale against um, P4s. Okay, Jezlin speaking in Spanish. Andre is also Spanish. I don't know what that means. I think like three minute... AT. Three minute AT grenades. That's, Probably, what, that's how I read yeah. that. Because pros would never expect three minute AT grenades. You never see it. It never happens. So um, that's actually a good call by Andre because it, it will catch you out. The Like the first Molotov of the game, uh, they do tend to catch you out and not really expecting early AT grenade tech. I'm not surprised that Jezlin lost that Kubel. Jezlin also losing a lot of his map control here as well. So he's definitely uh, losing a bit of momentum. Andre's squads are all very low, however, going for his medics is nice to see, because he can't exactly trade with low conscripts. Um, this is going to be a dangerous retreat path here if he goes through both of these squads, even three squads. And this is clever, Andre going for the flank to try and get that safe retreat only through one squad of Volks. Yeah. Certainly, the ideal scenario to be in, otherwise you're going to be up against about three, and that will not be fun. God damn it. And Andre went shocks, just be, and like, I, I just want to see what guards you are. You like. see guards, yeah, I know. I mean, I've, I've used yeah. a lot of guards, and um, my my opinion on guards, or well, my opinion on conscript squads retreating through vaults can be bad if they're low. That was pretty lame, but uh, conscript survive. Uh, so basically, with, so with guards, right? Is there a they're a very generalist squad? So in terms of like after the the nerfs. 
So they, they're still very durable. They still have a lot of long range damage. Um, you know, they have a lot of alpha damage with their, with their PTRS and with their DPs. And so they're a very, very strong squad, especially if you're putting them in garrisons or putting them behind heavy cover. The thing is, though, is that they, they do lose out 1v1 to things like Panzer Grenadiers. And a lot of people kind of see that and go, oh, well, guards suck now. They can't even 1v1 Panzer Grenadiers. It's like, yeah, but should they? Like, should guards actually be able to 1v1 Panzer Grenadiers? And, and why is that? Um, you know, Panzer Grenadiers are a more fragile squad. They're, they're four men, so they're more vulnerable to snipers, to AoE, to mines. Um, they don't have any anti-vehicle unless you go for the Shreks, in which case they basically don't have any anti-infantry. They don't have long-range damage, so they don't blob as well. They don't have alpha damage, so they don't blob as well. So, guards definitely work better um, in, in bigger numbers than Pigrens, and they, they definitely have some, some good synergy with other units. But, you know, it, I, I think it makes perfect sense for Panzer Grenadiers to be able to 1v1 guards in most situations, that certainly isn't always the case. If guards are pine heavy cover, if they can use buildings, if they get a nice grenade off because the Panzerians are charging in. So, I don't think people are used to guards just doing everything and not really having any weakness. Rant over. Sorry. Cool. <laughs> now, I was just sitting here listening, so yeah, I was uh, paying attention machine, which is always important. Uh, solid trick, I mean, they're from... Uh, Jezelin, I do love the the flamer over the wall trick can be nice to displace units from that garrison for our left player man from the west The problem with going AT grenade tech as well is that four cons four cons is the the general point at which they're like I would like some Molotovs, please. That's something I would like in my game But that is an additional uh, fuel investment obviously in addition to having those those AT grenades So generally going for both will, will delay your tech. Look at his munitions count as well. Actually, doesn't have any munitions, so... What's he been spent on? Okay, it looks like a fantastic ambush nice. from these shocks. They're gonna be able to force away these these vaults and these shocks. So there's the, uh, the storm pioneers. And MG setting up. MG is a nice counter to the shocks. You can use the smoke grenades, but it's gonna be burning through his bit of his munitions. It doesn't have a lot left. Yeah, gonna be throwing that one. Nicely played. I uh, would have got pinned. Didn't have the time to get outside of the arc before you see the pin go down. So we'll just be surprised and we'll allow that squad to maintain its presence on the field, which is good. I mean, it, that's the, that's a worthwhile smoke grenade. Uh, still on, on six men, certainly can stick around for a bit longer. Hopefully hold behind this hedge here. Still maintaining the suppression because of these vaults, but once it gets behind the hedge, you should be okay. And not not taking much damage there. Not only do the, the shocks have that high armor, but also because they're suppressed, they take less accuracy. And we actually have the mech truck here. So I don't know if Jezelin like really wanted this met truck or if he just wants to try out the new Panzer 2 uh, We'll see um, against the shocks the Panzer 2 is gonna be very nice, um, but against four cons on this map uh, And he already he's already revealed the AT grenades uh, I don't particularly see this Panzer 2 being very effective. The Panzer 2 is one of these units that uh, we, we actually have over nerfed a little bit. It's it's a bit too weak um, And now the problem with that is we we compared all the, the light tanks side by side and we made the Panzer II the strongest, but that wasn't really good enough. Because the Panzer II is in this really uh, flimsy tier that doesn't have access to medics, uh, it needs to be a lot stronger than things like the T-70 and the Stewart, which you aren't really going out of your way for. That being said, though, the medical supplies available at Vet Zero from the Stern Pioneers, they only cost 20 munitions, so they're very cheap, and they're able to supplement mech. So even despite the nerfs to the Panzer II, the, the mechanized truck uh, has a lot more, um, a bit more use opened up to it because it's not quite so risk reward. See a nice engagement coming out here from Jeslin, getting the, the Vols in behind heavy cover. Looking for a nade from these Vols, they're going to be getting one in and at least denying this heavy cover to the conscripts, which is awesome. Uh, love to see that. The Cons are going to be running back into that Incendi anytime soon. It should turn the engagement in favor of Jeslin. Actually going for the Puma. Okay, so I like the Puma. So the Puma has less anti-infantry damage, but it has a bit less scatter. So it's it's more consistent versus vehicles, but less anti-infantry. We didn't want it to overshadow the Panzer II. And even without having a lot of damage, it still has a very good impact. Just by poking at squads and by also shoving them around. So it can also be very good versus the shocks, assuming there's no conscripts nearby. So Andre building a Zis gun, so he, maybe he actually saw this mech, or maybe he just worked out that there was going to be a mech. Truck's going to be forced off here. No AT grenades available for that Puma. 
force. See, so successful retreat just coming in from under. I thought he was going to lose that conscript squad at the top, but he might even lose this one as well. Uh, first one got away in one bottle. I'm predicting a, a similar fate for this conscript squad. Oh, no, oh. goes down. Goes down. Spot of cons, not the uh, end of the world here for Andre. There was cover here, but no longer. Also, being able to destroy cover is pretty powerful. Yeah. Uh, it will help your infantry battles out. That being said, Jeslin doesn't have his STGs, and I don't understand why. The STGs are pretty much just an objective upgrade, as in an objectively good upgrade. There isn't really any downsides to it. It's not like the, the objective upgrade where before you can win. Even if you have the VPs, you have to like kick off all the objectives to actually beat the mission versus Andre. This could be the squad going down. The MG uh, from the MG34 doesn't get it. Will the Puma be able to? Oh no, stay away from those conscripts, especially with that Zisk gun in position. Yeah, put him back straight away. We're not going to see the wipe until the squad survives here for Andre. I don't mind going for the additional conscript squad. Going for, for two shocks can just, just lead you... Uh, down the road of manpower bleed. Uh, so we see Andre just decided to go with the, the, the conscripts here. Do we have Molotovs yet? Or is he going to be waiting? I don't know if he something? will. I mean, yeah, he actually has a, a bit of munitions now, but... Yeah, he... Perhaps doesn't want to spend all that manpower. It's just so expensive. Um, something that needs some looking at, but a bit out of the scope of this patch, at least anyway. The conscript's going to be flanking this MG with help of that Ura. It was a very close one as well, but there's the Vox nearby. So he may be able to keep this MG on the field. Uh, it's going to be a close one though, but the Vox should be able... No, actually he has to retreat that one, but... Yeah. And the Stim Pioneers are going to be chasing after these cons. Could be a squad wipe. The second one, maybe? No, oh, he didn't Didn't keep chasing there. Not in through the negative cover, didn't end up being enough machine, so... Double MG. Again, good versus the shocks. He's an unexpected one as well here for for Andre. He wasn't thinking there was a second MG on the field and therefore just kind of ran his two concept squads in together rather than splitting them up. It's always what you want to do when there are potential MGs on the field. There's no tier 3 yet for Andre, so he's in no hurry to, to get a tank out, a light tank. And it makes sense when your opponent has the Puma. Uh, there really isn't any point getting... Uh, a light tank. I mean, maybe an SU-76 yeah. to try and combat that, but he already has the Zis gun, so he'll probably just go straight for a KV-8. Yeah. It's only nine command points, and then go KV-8 into the IS-2. I certainly agree with that machine. Uh, I was just about to say, I hope we do see the classic uh, KV-8 into to IS-2. It's been a while since we've seen that. Um, wow. Those shots was... getting murdered. Oh my god. That was not fun. Shock's a good machine. Sticking with it. I like him. Shock's are terrible, dude. <laughs> and we want to bust them, but we yeah. weren't able to this patch. They're, they're just too expensive. Like, they're, they they're, they'd be okay if they just weren't so expensive. I mean, 360 manpower uh, and less reinforcement cost would, would make them a lot more viable. Uh, even on urban maps and, you know, in, in, in bigger game modes, they're still just not very good. And... Though I will say that they're going to be much stronger indirectly against Wehrmacht due to the sniper nerfs. Because the sniper was the thing that was really countering the shocks um, for Wehrmacht. And then like for OKW, probably the main reasons why shocks aren't very good are of course the manpower cost. But um, the, the, the incendiary grenades with no fuses make it very hard to charge with the Vox. I mean this, this Puma is actually running for his dear life, still firing at this conscripts, but there's this gun trying to get a nice angle on him but not able to get out of the range just in time doesn't find it and able to close with these vaults as well smart of jeslin to actually hang on to the grenade as well doesn't need it to win the engagement against the conscripts and would have needed it if had this gun decided to oh, press further oh jeslin man that was a nice disbarrage there and you got to be careful because whenever something is in front of a of an object the the aoe it means the scatter won't scatter behind it it'll just blow up so, yeah, whenever you have something in front of, of an object, whether it's a wall or whether it's a house, an AOE is firing at you, a tank shell or whatever, you have to get out away from that because it will hurt. Sure, machine, for sure. Uh, cutoff secured here by Andre, but it's not actually a cutoff with Jezlin having <laughs> that middle VP. Uh, denies the, uh, the, denies the deny of income here. So Jezlin is absolutely a okay. The, uh, the cutoff in inverted it's, commas. Yeah. <laughs> That's just what it is. Um, but back to what I was saying, the other thing as well, not just the incendiary grenades, but also... Well, the Puma doing some good damage to the Maxim. Jeez. 
Um, also, the, the frangible grenades, they have the, the slow. Uh, it means that you, just, you can't advance up to Obersol Darton because you just get hit by a frangible. So, I think the, the grenades are is really what's making Shocks underperform versus OKW. But as we saw, just the... You know, the Stern Pioneers are, are very good, not on their own, obviously, but in combination with, with other squads nearby, um, it, it can be difficult for the Shocks to have an impact. And yeah, yeah. then they're, they're just a bit of a, a dead weight. There's just a lot of manpower bleed. Sure, Machine, for sure. Jeslin, microing well thus far uh, with the Puma really has kept it quite safe. 8 one AT grenade, but other than that, uh, really just sitting at poking distance, using it to contribute to these engagements while Andre has a lack of tank. I'm surprised he didn't smoke here. He would have probably avoided losing any models if he just smoked and capped. He's going to lose his shock squad now. Oh, Andre. You can't afford to lose your shocks. They are they are expensive. They certainly are, Machine. That is a, a late retreat and a half from, from Andre. With that being said, he's going to have his KV-8 in a second. Uh, it's going to be available and should be able to burn down Jaslyn. Pumas aren't amazing against KV-8s. It's going to help. But Jaslyn certainly will have to add something else on. Dude, Pumas are terrible versus KV-8s. That yeah. secondary gun is ridiculous. Yeah. The Puma doesn't penetrate the KV-8, and the KV-8 just 1v1s it with that secondary yeah. gun. It is so funny. I love that. Yeah, it, you love it's, that, it's, don't it's, you? Yeah. <laughs> just, oh, it's mine as well. Yeah. You, you don't expect it because, like, oh, yeah, I have this tank hunter, my Puma, and then you have this insanely powerful flame tank. Which then just actually, yeah, so he already has that gun selected. Yeah, it's it's very unexpected. He's going for it now, and this Puma is going down. Yeah, the no return either. Yeah. I don't think Jeslin expected this um this this KV8. He's going to punish. He's going to get punished for his lack of foresight by losing this Puma. And Hello. If if the mine didn't detonate, he maybe would have been okay here. Pops a smoke. Nice smoke. Are there Volks moving in for a Faust? I don't believe the attack round hit there. Oh, what? Andre letting the Puma slip yeah, away. he missed the attack round oh, and man. maybe a little bit cautious of having a Vol squad with a Faust in the area. I mean, you've got to, you've got to expect the Raketan, I suppose, but... Yeah, as, especially since that first shot penned. It means he was vulnerable to a Faust. I don't know if it actually would snare him. It maybe would require a second shot. Especially bearing in mind that that's not a, a pack shot. That's like a Puma, so a bit less damage. Um, other than that, Jeslin has a bit of resources floated up, doesn't have his Panzer Headquarters, doesn't actually have access to the Coolin Panther, the Command Panther, which is what you, you generally see quite frequently, and that of course in the, the, the Austin most of the time, but given Jeslin's early power, then you wouldn't have needed to go for the Austin even mm. if he had it there. Andre's going to start roasting some squads here, Machine. Uh, Raketten moving up now. Certainly going to be a 9 10 addition to the Puma. It will be enough to force off the KV8, though I doubt it will find a kill until we see a tank added on here for Jezelin. What do you think he's going to go for, Machine? Jezelin? Yeah. No access to the Command Panther, as you were saying. Um. Still only two know. tier buildings. Hasn't gone for the, the Panzer headquarters just yet. I, I think he has a lot of freedom here. Oh, wait. No, he has. Is he just putting it. He has it down. Yeah, he's got there it now. We go. Just, just got just it. Now. Got All right, it. okay. Because he already has the Puma and he already has a Raketan. So he he has oh wow okay this Vox squad getting roasted there can the cons actually wipe him they can wow they were vet three there but there's only two models lucky break from Andre there goes the most vetted squad that Jezelin had and very important too because conscripts can't trade very well versus the vet five Vox generally get outscaled uh, it's it's not it's not ridiculously one sided but the conscripts definitely do lose out mm. uh, especially with those incendiary grenades oh for sure machine for sure. KV8 doing a fantastic job of forcing these squads off, and uh, it's just about con c constantly being in an area where, uh, where Andre doesn't expect. Because uh, sorry, where Jeslin doesn't expect. Because Jeslin has to be set up. He needs wow. a Ken there. He needs the Puma in the area. He needs Faust ready on the Vol squads, and he, he doesn't have that. This Puma actually got some really good penetrations there on that KV8, and got a bit of veteran C2. He has the aimed shot. He's got uh, that Vet2 coming up pretty soon, which which will help him a, a fair bit. And other than that, as for what Jeslin will go for, um, I don't know, I mean, because a Panzer IV is going to suck versus the Ice 2. Probably just a Panther, just because he can hold off with the Puma and the, uh, the Raketan. Maybe a second Raketan, and then go for the Panther. So he doesn't actually, um, oh no, oh, you know, maybe even the, the King Tiger, because he has, he has the battle group as well. 
has the uh, King Tiger veterancy bullet in as well, so. Right. It, it just might be a bit hard stalling out for the King Tiger, but he actually has all his VPs. Yeah. But, but once once the caveat is fully repaired and the IS-2 is on the field, he may lose a fair bit of, of map presence. So 500 VPs is a pretty impressive game with uh, Andre already bled down to 250. Yeah. Ice G is going to be a real annoyance as well. Just on uh, recognizing his uh, lack of firepower, I suppose you could say. No call in infantry at this stage. No Obersol Darton. Uh, really does need a bit of supporting fire here. So the Ice G is a good choice. Yeah, it is. The Ice G is going to be nice versus the support weapons of Andre. He has a Maxim. He has two Zisk guns now. Um, Meta me on this, Blake. Sorry? Meta me on, on this. On this? Right, so... Uh, it's, it's in case the Chaos Sorcerer subjugates the machine gun yeah, bunker, it is. right? It definitely is, yeah. yeah. It's totally the strat. Look, the other Zisk gun's going to join them. Maybe they're just having a smoko. Um, yeah, Zisk guns are clearly going to break at this stage in the game. Um, quick cigarette, a, a bicky and a cup of tea, and they'll be uh, back at shooting at tanks. Okay. That's, that's my best meta. That's all I've got, so. It's a new squad of Stern Pioneers, so he wants to have more repairs, I suppose. Oh, Molotovs. Very late Molotovs. Yeah, I went for them eventually. I guess he, he kind of went from the, the point where he's going to have enough fuel and manpower for this IS-2 close enough, so it's not really it's not really a waste. It's, it's manpower and fuel that's just sitting there. Yeah, that being said, though, he actually may not have the manpower because he's getting a bit of bleed, as we see, and yeah, he's, he, has, he has a bit of way to go. So maybe misjudging his manpower timing a little bit, but it's fine. Puma looking for more damage on the KV-8. Has to be careful that doubles this gun, but he has a smoke, so realistically, there isn't much chance of this Puma going down, even if he gets caught by both AT guns. So we see another KV-8 throw down. I just love watching the Panzer he Headquarters not penetrate things. It's my favourite. Well, you don't get to see it uh, very often. Because it does does generally penetrate uh, at least, like, enough to force things off. In, as far as medium tanks are concerned. And, yeah, the, the KV-8, I know that's what you were saying, is, like, it does. It, it's rare that you see it not effectively just 1v1 medium yeah. tanks. So, <laughs> like, when, when, when you see a tank, have to consider, you know what, maybe, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, or maybe I can actually try and fight this Panzer Headquarters. Yeah. It, it is pleasant. Okay, we have Raketten here as well. Where's the Puma? Yeah, first shot, the Raketten's actually landed here, so... Starts its journey uh, towards Veterancy here, Machine. It hasn't really done that much, though, has it? I guess it, uh, it, it wiped one squad in combination with yeah. the, the cons, but it's just yeah. been constantly forced quite low. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's been been lackluster, but it hasn't led to more map control or VP control for Andre. Oh, uh, it's going to go down. Chase down here. This gun's not quite facing the right direction. Puma penetrates again. Misses that oh. last shot. Close one. But yeah, this, th this Puma is the most effective Puma I've seen against the KV-8s, because again, often the KV-8 just puts the gun on and just rambos it yeah. down, and again, I'm surprised he didn't do it earlier what, when he had that chance. What were the exact changes to the main gun that you implemented? On the Puma? Yeah. It's just more, less scatter. Right, so just less scatter, yeah. Less okay. scatter means more accurate, yeah. so it misses less. Um, so yeah, yeah, I was just thinking, after watching this game, I was thinking I missed some penetration changes when I was reading no, or something. Yeah, no, no pen changes. Yeah. I mean, the, the KV-8's armor isn't, like, insane, but it's generally enough that it can... It can safely 1v1 the Puma without without being in too much risk. That's going to be the IS-2. That definitely can 1v1 the Puma. Uh, and we'll have a pretty good impact now. Jeslin, though, does have a lot of resources, and he's not far off his, his King Tiger. Uh, it really does make the mo most sense, Machine. 500 VPs, he has stall time, uh, and certainly enough units to hold on to 1 VP, even with the uh, IS-2 showing up. The main thing he has to avoid is losing squads here to the, the KV-8 and the IS-2, because that could just end his game. A King Tiger is all well and good, but when... Shuman going to get Chancellor here. A King Tiger is all well and good, but when you only have a King Tiger and no squads, it tends not to be very effective. Yeah. We could actually see Jeslin lose AVP. Yeah, it's going to happen. The end is nigh. Oh, no, he's getting the D-cap up the top, dude. Oh. Don't worry. 
So maybe not. Maybe he's gonna stick around just with the swag points of uh No, swag points. Yep. The, the swag points of a 500 VP victory. Assuming Andre doesn't pull something back. Uh, Puma, that is not a fight you want to take, sir. Yeah, he definitely can't fight that. Even even if you flank the IS-2, the, the Pintle Machine Gunner actually does do some good damage to that Puma. Jezelin floating up a lot of manpower, but doesn't have caches, man. Feel, feels cashless. JPEG. He's even building a squad of Obers. Yeah, I, while I, floating up this much manpower. I don't think he really wanted those Obers. He's like, well, I might as well build the Obers. Yeah. You know, I don't have caches or anything. But Jezelin also has <laughs> locked in a commander. Jezelin's looking pretty cool. You know, he's looking pretty unfazed here. He's probably listening to a podcast while playing this game. Just, just relaxing. Floating up resources, having his commander. And what would really benefit him? <laughs> Pack 43 actually probably would be a good idea. Yeah, but it probably would be. That's but really it. And the KB-8 on the field and the Incendi Barrage. So. Well, the Incendi never kills the pack, it just decrews well, it. It does decrew, but that's a, a pretty big annoyance for, for a fairly cheap price. Yeah, this, this Prima won't do a lot of damage here versus infantry no. as, as it gets modeled. It is Vet 2, actually, but still, it's less than it will be before, because it does... Uh, the AoE is lowered. So, it, w it will kill a model if it direct hits, but the direct hit is basically nothing. Where previously, if it hit right next to a model on the floor, it would actually kill it. So, we have seen the lock-in here from Jezlin. Uh, I suppose you will have access to the Arty, that's going to be nice. Uh, has floated up a, a decent amount of munitions, and in addition to that, of course, uh, mole spamming S-mines is a thing. Oh yeah, that's really annoying. So, yeah. Yeah, oh man, especially in like team games, we just every point there's just always S mines. I, I, you know how much I don't like S mines in general, especially when there's Volks planting them and just every yeah. point there's S mines. Oh no, run, Jeslin, run! You lose a VP! No, Jeslin, no! Uh... Oh, Jeslin! Oh wait, are they gonna. Really? Andre circle. gives it to him. He's like, nah. <laughs> nah, bro, it's cool. It's like giving your opponent a pentacle in League of Legends, yeah. but it doesn't really count if, if you your opponent it? gives it to you. Yeah. Yeah, wow, that's Vet 2. Jesus, that's making a huge difference to this anti-infantry damage. Whoa! whoa. And the IS-2 gets the kill on the cons. Here's the King Tiger. Gets the turret lock. Does it actually prevent the main gun? I think it does. That he's going to get another wow. great shell off. The IS-2 needs some serious repairs. Hey! 497 VP is the dream. Aww. It's stuff from Andre. It's a green. Yeah, this wasn't really a close game, was it? Not really, no. Um, just another Andres playing badly. It's just he can't seem to find any VPs machine. Uh, hasn't gotten a nice engagement against Jaslin. Jaslin's just got up the King Tiger. He's a perfectly filled out pop cap. Hits the munitions. He can now build S mines to store out these VPs even longer. Not that he, he needs to. Bunkers as well. I, mean, I don't want to say it, but I feel like if Andre just spammed Maxims, he, he would have been okay. Yeah. Especially the, against the, compared to the Shocks. I mean, it's, it's almost two Maxims for a squad of Shocks. And those Shocks just didn't achieve anything. They they just got wiped. And, yeah. It's it's sad, but oh well. The King Tiger here on the field. Jezlin doesn't really have to do too much here. LMG over. She's actually be using the, the booby traps as well. It's yeah. really nice to throw those down. Certainly has the munitions for it, so it would be nice. Nade for nade. Nade for nade. Lots of stuff on fire. Maybe it had a decent impact, Ooh. I feel. It just, yeah. it just didn't translate into map pressure, but that doesn't mean it didn't have an impact, so. There it goes. See you later. I mean, it gave the Puma a lot of veterancy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, like the KVA was, was good. It's just, there, there were other things. I mean, it may, mainly it was the infantry. He lost. Lost some cons, the shocks didn't do anything. So yeah, his, his commanders and his tech was fine. It's just his infantry and his choice of infantry weren't particularly uh, that impactful. Gonna be rear armor to these disc guns. Maybe another shot, but that should yeah. be it. But that's all. Oh, this gun here, so this could be a lot of damage on this King Tiger, but it will hunt down this IS-2, and that's gonna be worth it. Even if the King Tiger goes down, it doesn't actually matter. That's the zeroing Arty though, anyway. That's gonna be a dead Zisk gun. 
and the incendiary. Sydney coming down onto this garrison, yeah, it's going to prevent the Rakan from getting inside, and the Ice is actually still alive here. Puma smokes out. Yeah, he wants to block those discs from firing at the King Tiger. That was quite a clever play. IS2 does go down, and with that, Andre is going to have to throw in the towel. There's the GG. And that's it. I think they may sit here talking in Spanish for a few minutes. <laughs> and it's as enjoyable as that would be. There's yeah, still a, a 489 VP victory here for Jeslin. It's why he's the man. Yeah. And we all know that Blake is very jealous that I met Jeslin. Yeah. We hung out. I we got am. some drinks together. Yeah. I think Eric sent me a tweet today. He, it, sent, you, he sent you a tweet. Well, why can't Jeslin send me tweets? I'm the big fanboy. Uh, oh. I'm head of his fanboy <laughs> oh, no, club. No, but he didn't send me a tweet. He tagged right, me in a tweet. Yeah. Okay, there, right. There's a photo of like uh, me, him, Stormless Dev M, and a bunch of the, the, the Relic and Co-Devs. Right, cool. And we all got a photo together. And it was at the Relic office. That was really cool. Yeah. No, I was actually playing with Jeslin earlier today. We were trying to fine-tune the balance on the Stuggy and the T70. Um, it's actually kind of sad we didn't see basically anything that we changed. The only thing that we saw was the Puma. Varo Osuet Sel Puma. Puma very OP. Please nerf. Yeah. Um, but, as I, as I said earlier, the fact that now the medical crates are cheaper, um, you know, maybe too cheap, and also the fact that they, they're available at Vet Zero, it really does open up the mechanized play, and and I think um, Andre was vulnerable to that because he went shocks, mm. and like yeah he had the AT grenades, but say if he went if he went the, the guards, uh, even though they've been nerfed, they're still obviously going to be really good versus the Puma, and yeah we can we can end this game here. But that KV8 fed your Puma loads of vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Challenge him and try and translate Spanish. So yeah. yeah. So. I think it's cool that you'll have more variety from from OKW in terms of their their tech and their their opening build orders because the mech isn't isn't so risky without having the medics. But um, yeah, it just needs a bit more fine tuning. Uh, it's a shame we didn't see the Pan the Panzer II in action. Shame we didn't see the T70. Shame we didn't see the guards. Shame we didn't see the Peels. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. But no, it was a, it was a good game. Uh, we sh we saw some perhaps you know maybe the new meta maybe rushing out of Puma is going to be pretty powerful because then you won't have to worry so much about the the t70 or whatever light vehicle your opponent decides yeah. to go for the only issue with, with rushing out um the the mech truck is it delays your panzerfausts because the mech truck is like 50 more fuel than the battle group and you don't get your panzerfausts even your stgs as well until you actually get yeah. the truck down and finished so against us you know if they rush out like an m20 you can be um, a bit blued around until you get that down Still an enjoyable game in uh, Grass to Chiseling, so thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, uh, if you haven't played the mod, then please do give it a go. I will provide a link for it. By the time this video is uh, is launched, I'm sure we'll have the 1.1 update, uh, in which case I actually probably should have mentioned earlier that this isn't the 1.1 update. But yeah, that, that'll tweak a lot of these things that people have been um, concerned about, such as the penals and t the T70 and the Luke's being a little bit under-nerfed. But yeah, hopefully we'll do some uh, more casts on this mod. Hopefully you play the mod, give us your feedback, post the replays, especially in larger team games. We do need larger team games uh, for, for feedback because we don't really have any internal 4v4s going. A bit harder to, to organize 4v4 internal testing and such. Yeah. But anyway, we'll see you next time. Cheers.